Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I can barely move. My whole body hurts. Oh, I've been working so, so hard. Ah, oh. no! For the last few weeks, we have been working really hard with Auntie Nina and all the other volunteers. Yes, and it's been great. But I think we're ready for a break. Thank you, girls, for helping me. You've been working so hard. We all deserved a big break. Thank you for inviting us, Auntie Nina. And I did get really cool photos too. You know, girls, Jesus loved kind children, and He loved us so much. And you both been so kind to help me and others. Bula, Gigi kids. Hi, boys and girls. Do you know what bula means? It means hello in Fijian. Because Auntie Nina, where are we? We are in Fiji. That's right. We are in Fiji. It is so beautiful here, and we have been helping Auntie Nina build the local hospital so they can get more patients in. We've been doing mission work. It's been really hard. And today we're going to relax. We are going to be in a tree house. We have also eaten delicious food. And also seen some really interesting animals. Poppy, can you think of the native animal I am thinking about? Ooh, give me some clues. We can play a game. Great thinking. Okay, boys and girls, can you guess along with Poppy which animal this is? Okay, clue number one. This animal was first discovered on the island of Tavuni. The animal weighs between 222 and 363 grams. This animal's eyes are orange in color. This animal flies, but it's not a bird. This animal is almost extinct. There are not many of its kind left. The animal's skin type is fur. Kids, can you guess? <gasps> I'm stuck. I don't know. How can it fly? But not be a bird. Auntie Nina, do you know what it is? No, I don't know. It is a hard one, and it is called the Fijian monkey-faced bat. <gasps> Sometimes it's called other names like Fijian flying fox or the Fijian flying monkey. Make sure you Google the Fijian monkey-faced bat so you can see what it looks like. It's so interesting. Wow. Very interesting. Wow, it is super interesting. I think I'm going to draw a picture of it. <gasps> That's a great idea. But before I do, Esther, we have a special shout out. We do. So today's shout out goes to Zoe Owens. She's from Preston, England, UK. <gasps> Hi, Zoe. That's so far away. It is. Zoe is six years old. And she has coloured the photo of May and Ginger sneaking some jam. You can check Zoe's drawing on our website at the link below. Thank you so much, Zoe, for listening and for the amazing, beautiful picture you coloured. We love it! All right, thank you so much, Zoe. Makes us super happy. Have a wonderful week. Big hug and kisses from us. Bye! Oh, I'm tired. I think I'm going to have a nap. That's a good idea, girls. I'm going to have a nap too. Oh, I don't feel like napping. What I'm going to do is I am going to listen to a Gigi Kid story. <gasps> yes, and I'm going to listen to Willow and the Runaway Horse. Boys and girls, you are going to love this story. I'm going to tell you what it is about and I'm going to play you a little sample. Willow Edwards is staying at her uncle's Jake's house while her parents serve in the Navy and are deployed for a few months. Even though Willow misses them, she finds ways to keep busy. One of her favourite things is to explore the surroundings of her uncle's big property. One day, at the beginning of her school holidays, she hears a strange sound echoing the distance. Intrigued and a little concerned, 
She follows the noise and discovers a beautiful little horse whose hoof is trapped. Willow's kind heart knows that she needs to help it. A little afraid, she inches her way towards it and hopes that it will let her help it. Oh, boys and girls, I love this story so much because you can hear the sounds of frogs and ducks and all the animals that Willow sees on the property, on the farm. You're going to love it so much. Here's a little sample so that you can see what it's about. And then you can actually go to our website and buy the audiobook and listen on the app. All the instructions are on our website and it will be so nice to listen just before you go to bed. Willow and the Runaway Horse Written by Ella Stevens, read to you by Claire Staniforth. Chapter 4 Willow Explores Willow walked past Mr. Henson in the garden and rounded the corner past the large library window where she could see Mrs. Miller cleaning and her Uncle Jake on the telephone. It must have been early if her uncle was still home. She walked over to the large window, knocked on the glass and waved at them both. Her uncle smiled and waved back. Mrs. Miller walked over to open the window. Have fun today, Willow, and don't go too far and get lost. Stay where you can see the house, all right? I will, Willow promised. Have fun, my little ginger Willow, Uncle Jake whispered as he covered the telephone. Willow laughed at his pet name for her and set off for the day. She had a lot of ground to cover and thought to start down by the small creek where she always found interesting rocks to collect. Finding a shady spot under a tree, Willow sat down and took her journal out of her backpack. Day one, she wrote at the top of the crisp white page, then began to explore around the creek. She made notes of all the things she could see and smell, hear and feel. She also took her shoes and socks off and sat on a large rock by the creek, letting her feet soak in the cool water. She sat still, looking around at what creatures she could find. She smiled when a dragonfly flew past. She stretched out her hand for a butterfly to land, but it was too frightened and kept moving. She saw frogs and fish, a little lizard scurry by, and some ants, of course. Ants were always everywhere, and she enjoyed studying them to see what interesting things they carried on their backs. A few ducks waddled nearby, dipping under for a swim and paddling right past her. One duckling even lost a beautiful green feather that Willow was able to grab and put away. She would definitely put that in her journal. It wasn't long before the sun began to get hot and turn the once cool water warm. Willow dried her feet on the grass and headed back to the shady tree. She pulled on her socks and shoes and gulped down some cool water. Hmm, the water was deliciously refreshing. She grabbed her journal and wrote down everything she'd seen. She even made some sketches of the animals she had spotted and stuck the feather next to her drawing of the ducks. A low grumble from her stomach reminded Willow she had been exploring for a few hours and she needed a snack. Pulling out the lunchbox Mrs. Smith had packed, she beamed at the variety she saw. There were mini apples, blueberries, cherry tomatoes, crackers, olives, cheese squares, a cucumber sandwich, three mini quiche and mixed nuts. A feast indeed! Just as Willa was about to bite into her cherry tomato, a sudden loud squeal made her jump and drop it. What was that noise? Well, boys and girls, that's all from us. Go and get your book. Goodbye, boys and girls. Till next time. <sighs> Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. And don't forget, girls, you are Gigi, gorgeous in God's image. And boys, you are also Gigi, great in God's image.